What's up everybody, welcome to Chasing Games and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to get the Knives Out, Frugal Father, Dashing Dad, and Don't Trust That Snake Oil trophies on Resident Evil Village. All right, the first thing I recommend is having beat the game at least one time on any difficulty. This will unlock the extra content shop and from there you'll be able to get the Karambit Knife, which does a lot more damage than the standard one that you start the game with. Now when you start the game, I want you to pick the difficulty as casual. This will make it a much more forgiving experience and easier to get all four of these trophies on one playthrough. Long ago, a young girl went with her mother to pick berries. I'll be skipping all of the cutscenes that the game allows you to to kind of speed things along. So as soon as you're able to, go ahead and skip here and get started with the game. But more you took, she snarled. So more into Same thing here. As soon as it lets you skip, go ahead and pause and get through it. All right, first thing, turn around and walk Help up the it. stairs to take her up to her bedroom. You're there. It's like I said to your mom. That book's too scary for you. Once you get to the top of the steps, hang a left and walk down the hallway. Her room's going to be the door on the right. Once in there, take her to her crib and lay her down. There you go, sweetheart. Don't you worry. I'll be right downstairs. Daddy won't let those weird fairy tale monsters get you. Afterwards, you're going to want to make your way back downstairs to the kitchen where Mia is. Once you approach her, it'll initiate a cutscene that you can skip. Then just keep skipping until you're able to take control of Ethan again. Once you take control of Ethan again, you'll be off in the snow. Just keep walking forward, following that little path. Eventually, you'll come to some barbed wire fence that you'll have to crouch to get underneath. Once you get by the barbed wire fence, continue down the path till you come to a house. There'll be a door on the right that you can go into. So once you get up to the house, make your way in, then just follow the path you see I take here to get down to the basement, which will trigger the event that'll allow you to continue on with the game. Ah! 
After opening the cabinet, make your way back up the steps and you'll find that there is a big giant hole in the wall that you're able to go through to continue on with the game. And before we get to the combat, remember guys, we're going for the don't trust that snake oil trophy. So that means you can't use any more than three healing items. So don't be scared to play with low health. Once you get to where the screen's flashing red and one more hit will kill you, your health will regenerate to a point where you can take one more hit without dying. We're going to be in that state quite a bit on this playthrough because we're trying to get the knives only trophy along with that don't trust the snake oil. But trust me, follow the guide and you'll be fine. It's only one way to go, just follow the path all the way down and it'll take you into the village. Where the hell am I? After sliding down, make your way into the first door that you see. And if you want, go ahead and equip whatever knife you're using to your shortcut menu. Once inside, make your way down the hallway out the other door. From here, we'll go up the steps and make a left. The path will fork here, but just continue to your left and make your way down this street. When you come to the end of the street, make a right. You'll follow this winding path all the way down until you come to a house with a lit torch hanging from it. That's the house you want to go inside. Once inside, make your way to a curtain and examine it to trigger another cutscene. From here, you're gonna to wanna to examine the body that slumped over in front of you, and then this will initiate another cutscene that you can skip. Jesus Christ. Now you'll encounter the first enemy of the game. Uh, remember to have your knife equipped if you decide to kill him. Here, I just ran by him and grabbed the bolt cutters, but that's the main goal. Get to the bolt cutters and then get to the gate that is uh, chained up. Use the bolt cutters to cut it and make your way into the little shack across from the door. Once inside, make your way up the steps, and when you approach the window, a lichen will attack. Now here's something I didn't know at the time of recording this, but after the lichen attack starts, if you make your way down the steps and go to the window on the bottom floor and attack the lichen trying to get into the window from there, it'll go ahead and spawn the lichen that actually breaks into the building, and you can kill him to stop this fight a lot longer than I did just waiting around for him to jump in. Once he's inside, go run up on him with a knife and start slashing away and try to guard anytime you think you're about to get attacked. If you take some damage, don't worry. On this playthrough with not using any healing items and the knife only, you're gonna take a lot of hits. You'll be playing the majority of the game on low health, but that's okay because once you get to where the screen's red and you're about to die, your health will regenerate to a point where you can take one more hit. And since we're playing on easy, the enemies aren't all that aggressive. Once you defeat the Lycan, make your way out the door and take the path to your left. Over. Follow the blood trail up the steps into the next house. Once inside, run to the back of the room and try to fall in the hole versus climbing down the ladder. It's a lot quicker. Damn it. Follow the pathway until you get from underneath the house and then you just have to survive long enough to trigger the cutscene. 
Now, keep in mind, you don't actually have to kill any lichens. You can just run around and stay alive any way you can. And if you take damage, again, on this playthrough, you're gonna take a lot of damage and you're not using healing items, so be comfortable with it. Don't freak out if you're seeing you're starting to lose your health. If you're having a hard time surviving, you can try running inside this building up the hill. Uh, there's a bookshelf in there that you can use to barricade the door. You can wait it out a, a little while until they bust in. Once they bust in, you can immediately be in position to climb up the ladder to get away from them again. So here they bust in and I go straight for the ladder and make my way up before they can hit me. Once on the roof, just take the path you see me go here to make it to the building you originally got attacked in. You can barricade yourself in there to buy a little more time. Now there's no other way to escape out of here, so when they come in, be ready to attack them. Once you have an opportunity to escape, run out of the building and just keep scrambling around, trying to buy time until the cutscene takes place. Want to stress to you guys again, do not use any healing items, no matter how much damage you take here. If you get to where you're flashing red, just run away from the enemies until you get back to normal. You can take one more hit. It's on easy mode, so they're not gonna be super aggressive. You can do it. Save all your healing items for the last two fights, cause you're gonna need them. If you get cornered like I do here, remember, hold your guard up and try to run by them. The enemies can't grab you while you're guarding. Once enough time has passed, you'll either get shot in the leg with an arrow or a lichen will grab you from behind, triggering the cutscene. Once you skip that, go through the red doorway and talk to the old lady. Once the cutscene's over, turn around and make your way up the hill. You're gonna be going into the black steel doors on your right. Enter the building and grab the item off the altar. Then make your way out the other door. From here, you're gonna go through this field and make your way up towards the house. There are enemies hanging out in the tall grass, so run as fast as you can to get to the other end of it. Once you clear it, there'll be a door off to your right. That's the one you wanna go to to trigger a cutscene. Once the cutscene's over, jump through the window and make your way through the opening in the brick wall. From here, you wanna to run to your left and unlock the gate. This will trigger yet another cutscene. Now 
immediately run towards the red door to initiate another cutscene. You can just hang out here until she comes to get you. I haven't found anything that you do speeds up the time of making her come to get you any sooner. Just follow her down until another cutscene starts. Now, after this next cutscene, Ethan will start off with a gun in his hand. Don't shoot the enemy, just let him run up and grab you. He doesn't do any damage to you, it just triggers yet another cutscene, so don't fire. Once you take control of Ethan again, run to the right and run to the back of the room. You go into the kitchen and just to the left of the sink, there's a green drawer with a truck key in it. Examine the truck key to get the screwdriver, which you'll need later in the game. Take the truck key back to the truck and use it there to start another cutscene. The fire's moving fast. <sighs> Make sure you remember to hit the R2 trigger to start the next cutscene there. Don't worry. And try not to breathe in the smoke. You're going to want to make your way to the top and after the cutscene, go out the window and drop down to the ground. I just don't get it. Once you're on the ground, make your way to the case next to the gate that you unlocked earlier and use the screwdriver to open it. Retrieve the item and then go out the front gate. After the cutscene, make your way back out the same way you came in. Death. Ignore the old lady on your way out and just continue through the doors. Once you go through the gate, make your way to where the two torches are there and place the two crests that you found inside the holes. You'll have to rotate them to make it fit the picture. And you don't have to be precise. As long as you get close enough for you hit X, it'll line it up the rest of the way for you. Follow the path all the way up until you come to a switch on a door to your left. The next time you take control, just start running and follow the path all the way down. There's really only one way you can go here, but just keep running and eventually you'll have to make a left to break through some boards to get down to the next level. After you fall, keep running and eventually a big wolf will come and knock you down. Once you take control again, look for the crawl space is blocked by some wood. You can kick it free, then crouch to get underneath there. Keep running until you fall into a room with a large grinder in it. Once it starts coming at you, run to the back of the room and you'll see a little space cut out that you can stand in. As long as you're waiting in there, you won't get hurt or killed by the grinder. Once the grinder stops, Ethan will climb out and you can follow this path all the way out of this area, taking you back to the switch that you originally tried to throw earlier. Too close. Wait, do those freaks have rows?
Once through, take the pathway leading to the castle. Eventually, you'll be stopped by the Duke. If you do have the Karambit knife from the extra content shop but haven't purchased it yet, this will be your first opportunity to get it. And I highly recommend doing it because it saves a lot of time um, fighting the enemies. Shall I choose something? I've prepared a special present for you. I saw you eyeing that one. Thank you for your patronage. So we're going to make our way into the castle and head left. Could Rose be here? Head all the way down the steps, through the door, and make a right. Immediately to your left is a save room. I recommend going in there and saving your game. Save your game at every opportunity that you come across because if you do die, it's better to load a recent save versus just continuing as your time will not reset. After you save, examine this door to trigger another cutscene. When you take control of Ethan again, you'll be chained up. Look to your right hand to break yourself free, and during this unskippable cutscene, Ethan will also be healed if you've taken any damage thus far. Once you take control of Ethan again, go out the white double doors and head to the fireplace. You can examine it and crawl through. Run to the very end of the hall and collect the maroon eye ring. Open up the menu and examine the maroon eye ring to take the eye out. Go through the opening, turn left, and then head up the stairs. Where have they taken Rose? At the top of the stairs, turn right and unlock those doors. You don't need to go through them, but they will help out later in the game when you're being chased. Afterwards, head up the next flight of stairs and continue down the path towards the right to make your way to a door where you'll be able to place the maroon eye. After you place the eye in the door, it'll trigger a cutscene. Now, when you take control of Ethan, you won't be facing the door. You'll be facing to the left of the door. So make sure to turn yourself to the right and go through the doorway before you start running. Once you're off in the hall, make the left and then another left through the white doors. You'll run all the way to the back and there'll be an area that's boarded up. Examine it to tear the boards down, then run through and fall down the hole. You'll want to do this quickly as you're being chased by one of the daughters and the bugs can't hurt you. Once down there, there'll be a crawl space to the second opening. Head down and crawl through it and make your way to the next section. Don't have to crawl slow here, no matter how fast you go, Lady Demastru, whatever her name is, will not see you. There's only one path you can take here, so follow it all the way down till you come to a room with a hanging lantern from it, and with two other lanterns on either side of it. You need to either walk into it or swing your knife at it and hit it into the other lanterns to catch them on fire. Once they are both lit, it'll open the path to continue. This will make your way to the dungeon. It's kind of complicated to give you step-by-step -step how to go through here, but just take a look at the video and you can see the path I take to get through it as quick as possible. You really can't push your way by enemies in this game, so if one gets in your way, start swinging that knife until he's dead to get by him.
Towards the end of the dungeon, you'll start to be chased by one of the daughters. Just ignore her and keep running till you come to the pathway that's blocked by debris. As you attempt to remove it, it'll trigger a cutscene, then put you in your very first mini boss fight. Where are you going, little one? As soon as you take control, run up on her and start knifing her in the face. It won't take many swipes at all before she's dead. Once she's dead, head to the next room and grab the bottle of wine out of the bucket. Once you have it, head up the steps and go out the door on your left. Unlock the double doors on your right and go through them. Make your way back up the steps and go through the door at the top of the steps with a picture of a wine bottle on it. Place the wine bottle on the altar. Inside, you'll find a chest with the courtyard key in it. Make your way back down the steps towards the double doors you just unlocked. Before you're able to reach those doors, you will be attacked by one of the sisters again. I recommend just running around the table and then looping back towards the door. She can still get you in this room, so quickly make it to the other set of doors and unlock them with the courtyard key. Run straight across the courtyard until you can't go forward anymore, then hang the right and it'll take you to another set of doors. Make your way up the steps and don't worry about trying to go slow enough to where you don't draw her attention. No matter how fast you go, she won't notice you and turn around and start coming after you. You're going to want to go into the second door on your left. Inside you'll find four statues. Go to the one to the right and turn it. Go on to the one to the right of that statue, then turn it as well. Then one more time, go to the statue to the right, turn it, and that should solve the puzzle. Eventually the door open up and you can walk down the steps to the next area. Now this area is very much so a maze, so I'm not going to try to confuse you, but I did take it slow here so you can easily follow along. Be ready for another one to pop up at the end of this corridor. There will be another enemy trying to surprise you at the top of the steps. Once at the top, pull the rope. Follow the path ahead of you and cross over to the balcony. After the cutscene, go inside and grab the key to the left and use it to open the door on the right. After the cutscene, go into the cell on the left and crawl through the space there in the wall. Flip the switch to open the door.
Go forward until your path is blocked by steel bars, then turn right and all the way down at the end you'll find another switch. Once you're in control again, you want to lure her close by and then run around her through one of the other paths to get to the switch with your hand on it. This door opens slowly, so you'll have to dodge her at least one more time while you're waiting for it to finish opening. Once you make it through, there's only one path you can take, so follow it all the way down and you'll have to use the key you took from her room to unlock the door. Grab the mask off the statue and it'll bring the elevator up. Once the elevator stops, turn to your right and use your newfound key on the door. Head up the steps and go through the door on your left. Now I got confused when I got this area and went to the left, which is where you'd want to go if you want the labyrinth puzzle ball. But for the sake of this, the speed run and all the things we're doing, you should really just take that path to the right and head straight down the steps and not do what I did here. And watch out for an enemy just out of sight over here. Make your way down the steps and head towards the piano to play the music. Now accuracy doesn't matter here, just play through it as fast as you can so you can get the key. Once you have the key, make your way back upstairs so you can get to the door that's blocked by the steel bars. You know you're going the right direction when the lady emerges from one of the doors. The door she comes out of is the door you need to go through. So run around the table and get by her. The door with the bars will be immediately in front of you. Use the new key you just got to unlock it. Once inside, you'll be attacked by another one of the daughters. Run and pull the lever, which will open the windows, making her vulnerable. Run up on her with a knife and slash away until she's dead. Once she's dead, head through the double doors and keep down the path until you see a statue on your right with the next mask. Continue down the path to enter the bell room. Goal here is to hit five bells, and some can only be reached by using a gun, which will not void the Knives Out Only trophy. You got the one as soon as you walk in, one on the chandelier, one on top of the bookshelf, one outside the window, and then one swinging back behind the gears. Once all the bells are rung, the painting will open up revealing a new pathway.
follow it and climb up the ladder. There's only one path to take, so follow it until you eventually come to the roof. Once on the roof, keep running and then take the path to the right that goes around the elevator. Follow the path until it dead ends, at which point you will turn and walk up the roof. When walking up the roof, you're gonna make a left, then two quick rights. There's only one path to take here, so follow it all the way until you reach a zip line. Examine it and your character will fly down to the next area. Once you land, grab your next mask. There's a ladder just next to where you landed. Try to make your way to it and drop it and get down the ladder before the flying monsters can get you. If they do get in your way, just swipe at them with the knife. Once down the ladder, get inside the elevator and take it down. Be ready to go as soon as the elevator stops as the lady will be close on you. Run out this door and then go through the next one and then hang the immediate right. This is why we unlocked that door earlier to have a path around her. Follow it up the steps and we're going back to the door that we had to place the maiden's eye in. So up the steps, take the path towards the right and wraps around till you get to the door. Head down the hall and use the lady's key to unlock the door to get our last mask. Once you have the last mask, the door behind you will close shut, so you'll have to crawl through the fireplace. Make your way up the steps and immediately run to the bookshelf and move it out of the way. Once you do that, turn around and grab one of the pipe bombs off the table and throw it towards the crack in the wall. This will make the daughter vulnerable and then you can start swiping away at her with the knife. And don't worry about the pipe bomb voiding out the knives out only trophy, you're still good to go. Once she's defeated, grab the animal skull above the fireplace, then make your way back out the same way you came in. What you need to do here is examine the back of the animal skull. That will allow you to place it on the statue, thus unlocking the door, letting you escape. Okay. I should be able to get out with you. Once you go out the door, run down the hallway through the next door, but keep in mind the lady will be waiting on you. If you want to go slow, she will keep walking and you can kind of follow behind her, but I just decided to run by her and got lucky didn't get hit. Make your way down the steps, then down the next set of steps to where the four statues are, and you're going to place the four masks on those statues. Keep in mind, they aren't interchangeable and she will run up on you while you're putting these on here. So be careful and keep a mindful eye on where she is at. If she gets too close, you can always run into the safe room to the left of the statues and she'll eventually go away. Once all the statues are placed, it'll still take a while for the door to open. So again, you need to keep in mind of where the lady is at so she doesn't walk up behind you and slash you while you're waiting on this door to open. Once it's open, run all the way through. It's just one path to take. Follow it all the way to the end. You'll come to a coffin, which you can examine. 
and then a knife you can grab to trigger the boss fight. Now this looks far more intimidating than it is with the knife. As soon as the fight starts, run up on them and start swiping away with the knife. Eventually it'll fly away. Run up the steps and wait for it to land, then charge it again and start swiping away at the knife. I found it worked best if you're able to get on the side of it or behind it and just keep hacking away. Gotta remind you again, do not use any healing items. Save them for the last two fights. can't do anything when it flies away and it'll send the flies at you. I just try to run around and hold my guard up if the bugs get close to me. Eventually she'll land again and we're just going to do a little rinse and repeat. Run up on it and start slashing away, trying to make your way to the side or behind it. Once you do enough damage, it'll trigger a cutscene that will force you inside the building. Whenever you take control again, run up the steps and wait for her to attack. As soon as Ethan gets up, run up on it and start slashing away until the fight's over. Grab the flask in front of you to open up the pathway. Go inside the house on your right, and you can do a quick save. Uh, 
All right, after you say, continue down the path. Uh, there'll be a door that's locked. You'll have to use your knife to break the lock. Remember, don't use a gun. Uh, after you get all the way in there, you'll drop down to where there's some water. There's three fish in there. If you need some more fish, uh, if you're just missing a couple to get the Duke's recipe that grants you extra speed, it will help with the trophy. Not necessary, but it will help. Uh, to finish the recipe, you also do need, I believe it's called the golden fish. I don't go there in this playthrough, but if you need any uh, any help figuring out where that is, drop a comment below and I'll get you helped out. We'll make another video or something showing this location. But uh, I won't be doing it in this playthrough just because I, I don't need it and just trying to make the run as quick as possible. So after you go in that room, you'll have a quick cutscene with her. Afterwards, pick the uh, open up the chest, get the key to unlock the door and continue on down the path. You'll come to another door with the switch there. Open the switch and keep on going. What's this? Continue down the path towards the left. There's going to be a couple of enemies in here, but if you just run straight across down the bridge, over the bridge, and up to the uh, door, they won't have any chance. They won't even get near you. So just sprint on by, ignore the howls and all that. You'll be fine. Once you get through the door, keep running until you trigger a cutscene with the Duke. After the cutscene, do a quick save. Um, I like to save as often as possible when doing this because if you do happen to die, you can reload your save versus restarting because if you just restart, you're going to still clock all that time you had before you died. So it's always better to reload a recent save. All right. So anyways, after you save, uh, use that same key you got out of the chest after talking to the old lady to unlock the door next to the Duke. And that's going to take you back down to the village. Keep on running through. You'll have to use your knife to break that lock again like you did earlier. And now you're back in the village. You're going to see me uh, run off to the left here to grab uh, a few fish I needed to finish the, the recipe. If you already have it, you, you don't have to follow this part of it. Just uh, wait until I get through this. I'm coming right back to the same area I was. All right, so I got the fish. I'm heading back to the village. If you do happen to come this way, there's going to be two werewolves back on the village. Once you get back in there, you can run right by them. Well, do a better job than I did there, but you can run right by them. They don't give much pursuit. They won't follow you into this house. So keep going down the straight, go through the blue gates and take a sharp left and then go up the steps and into the house. There's some knives you can pick up in the house, but again, the kind of playthrough we're going through, you're only using knives and not really trying to spend money is no point. Once you exit the house, uh, you can unlock this door if you want, then go in the barn and slide the bookshelf out the way. That opens the path. You're gonna run through there. Gonna be an enemy right behind you, so just keep on running. He will chase you eventually, but we can deal with him later. You're gonna run to that uh, gate with a do not enter sign, break the lock, quickly run. Remember, you got enemies chasing you, and the code is 07. 0408. Again, the code is 070408. And be ready for after you unlock this, there's going to be an enemy standing behind you. Sometimes you look and they won't follow you here. He was right there in my face, ready to jump on me. Should have blocked. So maybe keep that in mind. Be holding the block button down after you finish in case he is behind you. But deal with him. A couple of swipes of the knife. He's out the way. Then go back and get your stuff out of the. Uh, locked cabinet you got there so now you have that crank and we're going to run that down here there's going to be a bunch of enemies waiting for you don't ignore them i didn't hit them at all just they'll howl just make sure you get to the crank as quick as can and at the jack handle and then get in front of it and crouch and just keep holding forward when it gets high enough ethan will start to crawl through so as you see i made it through that i didn't have to fight a single enemy and didn't get hit so after you merge from the other side, you're gonna make the first right you can. Again, there's a bunch of enemies in this area. Just run by them, keep running down that winding path. It's the same path at the beginning of the game where you went into that house with the lit torch. We're kind of going back to that uh, that area, but we're not gonna go inside the house. So keep making your way around, make a sharp right. Uh, don't have to worry about that armored lichen. You just put the key in there. You don't even have to fight him. He won't attack you in, uh, unless you hang around too long. Immediately climb up the ladder and uh, run around to the other side and drop down. 
Then immediately climb up the next ladder to the house so you can drop in the little hole in the roof to get the next part of the key you need. There's also going to be an enemy in here. I didn't touch him at all. Just run, grab the key, turn around, run out of the house. Now, if you do it quick enough, he won't even have a chance to attack you, so don't worry about him. Just be on the move. Better see the Duke again. After you unlock the door and run out of the house, just go out the main gate there, and then you're gonna follow the path toward the left, back up to the Duke, and he'll do another cutscene and show you where all the all the bad guys are on the map. As you see here, I had all the ingredients I needed to for the recipe that increased your speed, so I went ahead and did that. And I think I said golden fish, it's the finest fish. If you need to know the location for the finest fish. Oh, yeah. Drop me a comment and we'll make a video showing you where it's located. Um, but anyway, if you won't have the, the ingredients to do that, obviously you'll skip this part that I'm doing now. But just want to take the time to help increase my speed. It's not necessary for the the uh, Dashing Dad trophy. You will have enough time to do it even if you aren't uh, don't have the increased speed. But every little bit helps. So after you finish talking to the Duke, there's a door to the left where you can use your... Uh, new combined key that you got from the house earlier and go through that and it's going to take us to old Donna Moreau's house. Just one path to take here. It's all heavily bush, but you'll eventually find your way through. There's only one way it'll let you go. Uh, keep running around by everything. You'll go across a long bridge um, and there'll be a couple of scenes where Mia gets in your way. You'll have to start walking slow. He won't run after you see Mia, but just power on through it and go as quick as you can. What's going on? Rose feels different. Again, all the other paths in this area are blocked, so just keep making your way forward till you get to the house. Everyone leaves me. Even Rose. I don't want to be alone. This can't be real. Once you walk down some steps, you'll see like a big grave. Just start to veer towards the left and you're gonna walk to the door and uh, the key item you need to use there is the photo that you start the game off with. So examine that, then slide the family photo in. What's going on? After you do, the door will open up and you can head to the back and go inside the elevator. At the top of the elevator, just head on out. There's only one path to take. It'll lead you to the house that we're uh, going to be doing the next portion of the game in. All right, we're going to head into the house, then walk to the back of the room. There'll be a door on the uh, in the left-hand side of the wall, and that's the door we're going to go through to continue. From there, go to the only other door in the room. Follow the path all the way down to the next elevator. Again here, there's only one path you can take. It's a little winding uh, corridor. Just follow it all the way down till you get to the, the room with the doll holding the flask.
grab the flask to trigger the next cutscene. Uh, after the cutscene is over, you won't have any of your weapons, uh, including the knife, but it doesn't matter. There's no, you don't have any enemies that you, you're going to be fighting here. Just kind of have to run away from uh, the big baby fetus here. What? Once the lights come back on, go to the doll and examine the right shoulder. Slide your hand along it till he, Ethan pulls off the little compartment there and uh, gives you the key you need. You get that, make your way to the left leg and do the same thing. Slide your hand along until it prompts you to take it off and that'll get you uh, the little thing you need to wind up the music box. All right, so use the key you just got from the uh, doll to unlock that door to your right. And then run over here and you're gonna enter the code. The code is 052911. Normally you would get this from washing off the bloody ring, but since we already know it, we can skip that part and save ourselves a little time. So once you get that open, you're gonna run all the way through here. Um, there's gonna be a door on your left that's gonna open as you start to pass it. Go inside there. And we're going to use the winding key on the music box for our next puzzle. Why is this here? This is going to be a little tricky. Uh, what I recommend doing is just wait till I get to like till I get the puzzle solved, then pause the uh, video and then match yours up with it, so you don't waste your time trying to get everything lined up. What you're seeing on the screen is right now, so you can pause here and take a look. Once you finish the puzzle, it'll open up and you can get the tweezers. Now you need to run back to the doll and grab the film out of the doll's mouth. So head back down, make a right out of that room and head right back down to the room we were just in with the big doll. You have to be standing on the doll's left hand side to get to the mouth, so make sure you don't accidentally grab the examine the eye instead. Just go until you see it say examine mouth. He'll automatically open it up and then you can use the tweezers to pull out the film, which you'll use to solve the next piece of the puzzle. After you grab the film, run all the way back to where the elevator was. There'll be a white door on your right hand side and that's where you're gonna use the film to unlock the next little area here. All right, once you make your way in here, there's gonna be some film on the desk. You wanna examine that and use the film you have to start the puzzle. How it's gonna be lined up is number one is a picture of the doll. Number two is a picture of the book. Number three is a picture of Baby Rose. Number four is a picture of the music box. And number five is a picture with the hand with the wedding ring. So doll, book, baby, music box, wedding ring is the order. Once that plays, you have to sit there and watch this little video. It's long, you can't skip it. It sucks. After the video finishes playing, the uh, screen that the projector was going on will drop down and the little path will open up behind the little secret bookshelf. You run in there and to your right, there'll be some scissors and you'll use those to cut the uh, bandages blocking you beneath. Once you make your way towards the left, the phone will ring, go back and answer it. Mia, what are you talking about? I love you both so much. I had to. I had to do it. 
After the phone call, head straight down the path and make a right. You'll go through a door that'll take you back to an area that we unlocked earlier in the game. Just never really did nothing in here because we already had the ring situation taken care of. You can't go through the door right away because I guess they're supposed to be blocking you from that person that's in the room, but run by them. Use the scissors on Mia, cut open the bandages, and you'll get a piece you need to go down into the basement. After you grab the brass medallion, there's a little area that breaks off from the area with the doll. Follow it down to this door and place the uh, brass medallion in the upper right section. And then you'll have to uh, line up the pictures on the bottom and left there. Uh, that one's going to, on the upper left, is going to be the bird flying to the right. And on the bottom, it's going to be three eyes closed. And once you do it, the door will unlock and you can run all the way down. Basically, it's that same path you saw earlier in the little film projector puzzle. Just do what he did in the video, run all the way down, run around it and climb down the ladder. There's going to be a key down there. That's all you need. As soon as you grab the key, turn around and climb right back up. So now we're making our way back up towards the elevator. So climb up here, you're gonna run up the steps you just came down and follow that path back up to the room where the doll is. Once you get up there where the room where the doll is, we'll be going back out those double doors to the left. Once you get to the room where the doll was once at, you're gonna go left through the double doors and run down that same winding hall. And I'm assuming if you're going for these trophies, you already beat the game at least once already. But just in case for those who haven't, there's going to be a giant uh, baby fetus monster is going to pop his head out. Do a quick turn, run back to the room. You're going to go through that other door that you use the silver key to unlock. And we're going to go back through that path. Same one where you had to use the scissors to cut open the, um, the bandages that were blocking your way. We're going to go back through there to get to the elevator. That way we can avoid waiting on that baby. So make a left, keep going right by the phone where you answered the phone earlier, duck down, crawl through, then make a left and go out the white door and you'll be right where the elevator is. Use the breaker box key you got from the well on that box and you're gonna get a little relief. Take the relief of the child and run back through the same area you just came out of where you have to crouch through the little cut bandage. But before you go out, wait, because the baby monster will be waiting for you in here. So just take it slow. He'll come out here. Just wait him out. He'll eventually turn around and you can uh, follow him out. I don't know how uh, how close you got to get for him to notice you, but I just keep kept staying crouched and just kind of walked slowly. And once he's far enough away, you can get up and run to the door. He won't be able to get you. Use the relief of the child in that door, and you're going to run through to the next area. Go on the first door you see on your left, then wrap around the little table there. You go into this walkway, turn to the left, and go in the white door. There'll be a breaker box on the other uh, end of the room. You're going to grab the fuse out of there and then start to make your way out. It'll go black for a second, but Ethan will pull his flashlight out. Uh, once you get back to the point where you're almost out of this area, uh, the baby's going to pop up again. And you're going to have to run all the way back to this room and hide under the bed. So there he is, do a quick turnaround, go exactly back to the same room you were at where you got the fuse out of. And when you hide under the bed, make sure you're going from the side that faces out of the room. That way uh, you can just crawl straight out and run away from the baby. Once you get underneath the bed, just wait them out. There's nothing you can do to speed up the baby's walking. Just hang around there. The baby will walk up to you. He'll pause in front of the bed. And then he'll uh, continue further on, giving you enough space to squeeze out the bed and run by him.
So yeah, as soon as you see him start to move on, swiggle out of the bed, eventually you can stand up and then you can start uh, sprinting again and just run all the way back out this area. Swing around, gonna go up the steps. Now, uh, once you go out this room, you can't go to the right, go to the left. And you're gonna go back out through the, the same room where you uh, ended up having the doll at. So go down throughout through the double doors and follow that long winding hall back to the elevator. We're gonna use that fuse we got in the breaker box to uh, power up the elevator so it can come back down and get us. All right, so here's the box. Put the fuse in there. You don't have to hit the button, the elevator automatically is gonna come down to you, but this will trigger the baby coming in. You don't have time to wait. Run through the white door where you did the film puzzle and then just uh, kind of loop the baby around the table. Once he commits to one side of the table, run around him, go out the door, and then you can get into the elevator, no problem. And uh, keep some distance from that baby. I know it moves slow, but it can lunge at you and get a little burst of speed and catch you off guard. But once you get in the elevator, uh, hit the button baby won't get you screen will go black and then the baby will run up on you but he cannot get you once you're in the elevator it'll take you up to the uh next boss fight against donna moreau once you get to the top of the elevator ignore that door on your left and continue down the path on the right and it'll uh, wind you around till eventually you go into a room that will trigger the next boss fight. So there are random locations of dolls or piers, but the first one is always in the same spot. So go out that door on the left and then run up the stairs. Follow the path towards the left, and then once you get to this area, turn right and go into this room, and there she'll be sitting in the corner. Walk up to her, hit X to examine it. He'll grab it, he'll stab it. You can't uh, skip the cutscenes where you're attacking the doll, so just let them play out. So after you take control of Ethan again, you gotta run around and find her two more times to finish the fight. She's gonna be in, like I said, random locations, but she will not be back upstairs anymore. So we can head downstairs and start patrolling the area looking for her. Uh, you'll hear little, uh, little dolls snickering and laughing in the background. The louder the dolls get, the closer they are to getting you. So you gotta you have a short amount of time to find her before they attack you. Again, if you do happen to get attacked, do not use heal. Just keep running around uh, until you find her again. They're all wearing black, she's wearing white, so it ain't too hard to find her. Just uh, take your time and scope out every room. There you go, there she is the second time. Grab her, hit X. Then same thing again. Uh, keep running around till you find her one more time to finish the fight. There she is, gonna run up on it, hit X, and finish this fight. Things right. After the fight's over, you'll automatically get the next key you need, and the flask will appear off into the distance. You can run over and grab it, then exit the house. So that's who was behind all this? That makes two. Once you leave the house, follow the same path all the way back to the elevator and take it down.
All right, once you get out of the elevator, go exit the, the building and make your way up those steps. When you come to a house, make a right in front of it, and there'll be a little pathway, a little, little archway, go through that archway. Once you exit the archway, turn left, and then there'll be another archway on the right of the house, run through there. Now, uh, enemies will be spawning, but ignore them. Now here, I went left into this pathway. I should have stayed to the right and continued down. You see, I turn around then make another left, but initially, when you come out of that second archway, stay to your right to exit this area. You run through the door. Uh, here's that long drawbridge, long drawbridge that we passed earlier. Uh, just keep sprinting by it. There will be enemies starting to spawn in this area as well, so just make your way by them. If you do happen to get stuck up on one, you can't push your way by, uh, start swiping at them with a the knife to get them out of your way. You'll see here I get stuck up on one coming out of the ground, just start wailing at him with the knife till he's dead, then make your way through this tall brush area again. Once you're back to the Duke, run over to the typewriter and do another save before we go handle the uh, next section. All right, now we're gonna go into the door opposite of the Duke. With the key you got from Donna Moreau, you'll be able to open this one up now. As soon as you make your way down the steps, you'll get attacked by a new enemy here. You can uh, skip this cutscene, and when you start take control again, you'll be inside the building. Just run around him, avoid him. Uh, I wouldn't waste the time trying to kill him. As soon as he gets out of the doorway, run around and uh, follow this little path I take here. We're basically making our way to the door on the other end of this section here. So run around him. He's not too hard to avoid. Again, with the game being on easy, the enemies aren't super aggressive. So keep running down this path. Keep following the creek basically all the way down. Uh, I'm kind of zigzagging because I thought he was near me behind me. You see, he still got me there. Um, Again, don't try to kill him. Once you get to this section at the end of the creek, use your knife to break up the little green jelly and then run by. He won't follow you into this area. Now, follow the pathway, use your knife to break up the green stuff again, then look up at the ladder and hit X, and Ethan will jump up and climb and get into this uh, over the wall. Once you land, run inside the building there. There's another typewriter. Go ahead and do another quick save, and then we'll start the... Uh, next section. After you save, continue down the path until you uh, come to an elevator and you can hit the switch to go down. When you exit the elevator, you're gonna hang a right, then make the very first left. There'll be an opening to your left up here, take it and then go up the steps. Follow this path to the end until you have to squeeze between the uh, green stuff there and it'll start another cutscene. After the cutscene, squeeze your way back through and then go back down the steps. So once you get to the bottom of the steps, follow this path that you took to get in, out, and we're gonna keep going straight back towards the area where we initially got off the elevator. But instead of going back towards the elevator, kind of go to your left, then make a right to go up these steps here, and then make another left. Now there'll be a little debris tied up with yellow tape. Swipe at it with your knife and it'll block, unblock the pathway for you. Jump off the little ledge there. Now what we're going to be doing is here is running inside that little shack, grabbing the key and running back out. You don't want to get caught up with the enemies. A lot of them will spawn here. Once you grab the key, just get in and get out before they have a chance to get up to you. As 
So back out the same way you came, climb up the ladder that you just recently jumped off of, then run down this pathway. At the bottom of the steps, keep going forward and you'll come out to an opening. Uh, we're just going to keep running straight through everything. There are going to be a couple of enemies uh, that are going to spawn once you get near this little house here, but just ignore them. Keep running by, get to the boat, and use the boat key that you just grabbed from that shack to go on to the next area. Once in the boat, just follow the path that's right in front of you. Eventually, the giant fish monster will jump out in front of you, but it won't hurt you. Just keep going until you reach the next docking station. What was that? Once you dock, keep running down the path till you come to a, some green curtains, go in them to initiate the next cutscene. Once you take control of Ethan again, you'll be being chased by the giant fish monster. Just run up the steps and run down the path until Ethan will automatically jump over to the next ledge there. Once you land here, run off the edge of the cliff there, then turn right to run up the hill. Uh, you'll see here in the video, I turned left first thinking I was gonna be able to skip something, but quickly realized I made a mistake, turned around and ran back up the hill. You're gonna to wanna to go into this building where you run down this hallway here. He Let's see, agent. yep, now down here, turn left, and then you will enter the save room, make a quick save here before we go ahead and handle this next boss fight. Once you leave the save room, make the immediate right and run out that door. You're gonna follow this path to the windmill. Now, uh, if you were playing this the first time, you would try to use the windmill and eventually the crank would break off, but you don't actually have to do that. So avoid that to save time. Just run all the way around and enter the windmill and uh, go down the ladder there. So you fall through there and uh, you're coming up on one of the spots you're allowed to use the gun and still get the knives out only trophy. When you first get here, pull out whatever gun you got and shoot that part right there. And that's going to help you uh, later on when you need to drop the other side of it to be able to continue down the walkway. So use your knife for the rest of them. As you see, you hit that one there. You may have to crouch to get to it. And uh, then you can make your way across. Now, remember, when you're doing this, you got to wait for him to come by and go across there before you try to run. So here, I'll pause, wait, let him come by first. And then make my way across. So you'll see run up here and hit this with your knife and that'll drop the other one. You don't have to wait for him here. He can't get those. Some of the ones that are kind of like Bob in the water are the ones he's able to get you off of. So run straight across there, go up the steps and immediately uh, examine this and you'll push it over the edge. All right, so once you got that pushed over the edge, fall off to the side just to the left of you and examine this little box here and then you can get the switch. Kinda gotta look at it just right and then you'll be able to examine the switch. He'll pull it down. And that's gonna activate this bridge here. As soon as it comes up, run across and he can't get you on this bridge either. So hit the blue switch, wait for it to come up. And you're gonna run across, hit the orange switch, and wait for it to come up. You can skip this one right in front of you, just run straight across. Now, what you want to do here is a very special order you need to do this in to get it to work. You need to, after they all drop, you need to go blue switch, then orange switch, then yellow switch, then run as fast as you can all the way across, and you can make it without any other bridges dropping on you. Once you get to this section, you can just run straight across. He won't get you on these. He'll be jumping around, but it's all for show. He can't hurt you. Here he'll charge, but he won't actually get you here. So run across. Now here you have to go to the one on the left first. He's going to come by and then you have to be quick about it. As soon as you get on there again, he's going to start charging again. But you do have enough time to make it to the last one and make a left. Once up here, you're going to run across this. He can't get you off here. He'll be jumping around, but he can't hurt you. So don't stop. Just keep running and push this over to make your next bridge. So once that's down, run across, go up the steps again, and you're gonna push the last little deal here, and this will make a bridge for you to be able to get across to the other side. So he's gonna jump out after it lands. Again, can't get you, run down there, 
run across, go up these next steps, hang a left, use your knife to break through the little green slime, and then you're gonna wanna go up the steps there. Excuse me, up the ladder, I mean. There should be another switch up here that's gonna raise up the boat, which will be what you fall out onto to get to the next area. Uh, you can make some stupid joke about catching a big one. Then you run through, get to the other side of the boat, green stuff's gonna pop up. Keep slashing away till it goes, and then up over the ledge there to the next area. You gotta run around the right side. Don't do it like I do here and look to the left. You gotta run around to the right. See, I got confused here for a moment. Run around to the right, and there's gonna be a lock. You're gonna have to look up at it to swing at it with your knife, but make sure you don't shoot it. You can reach that with your knife, and you need to do that to continue to get the knives out trophy. So keep climbing up the ladder. Once you make it out to the top, you gotta run out, head to your uh, left there and grab the crank. Now you have to use that crank again to get by, but before you do that, you have to examine this ladder. It won't let you put the crank back in until you examine that the ladder's broken. Once he uh, says that the ladder's broke, you can't climb it, then run back to where you got the crank, use it on there, and then you'll move it around and it'll make one of the, uh, make a new ladder appear for you basically. So it'll give it a couple cranks, he'll take it with him, turn around and go back to where the ladder was. And there you have it, a new ladder just dropped down. Climb all the way up it. All right, you're gonna run around this one path to go. Use the next zip line here. I guess he just captains to carry one of those zip liner deals on him at all times. This monster will jump at you. He won't be able to get you. Immediately run it over to where this crank is and use it here. And that's going to provide power to the uh, area we were in before, the area where the Duke is waiting for us, that little save room. So after this, you're going to run right back down the same path you came. Okay. So heading back towards that building off there in the distance. Keep going. Now you got to solve this little puzzle here. Uh, you can just wait until I have it solved here. Basically, that little picture on the right is how you want to make it look, but it's kind of turned to, uh, to the side, as you can tell by the part that's blacked out. So uh, from the bottom right, you want blue, bottom center blue, then the uh, orange diagonal there, and then turn that one uh, white in the center and blue in the upper left corner. But like I said, you can wait till I have it done here, pause the video and look at it. So I need to turn that left one, upper left one blue, and then it'll be good to go. As you can see, I got a little, took a little time figuring this out. So don't wait, make my mistake. Just wait till I got it finished there and then you can do it. Jeez, I don't know what took me so long there. So as I'm uh, hitting the switch, you can still see how it needs to be uh, if you need to pause the video to look at that so you don't take as long as I did doing that. And once you do that, you'll drain the water. You'll see the old fish monster flopping around. Turn right and go back out the door, run down the hill. You'll see him crawling out. He can't hurt you. You can't hurt him. Don't be afraid. Just uh, follow him out. Eventually, he's going to climb up a a mountain there, boulder there. You can't get to him. Just make your way through the houses. Uh, and get ready for the boss fight. Um, let's see, we're coming through here. You're gonna drop down, and uh, once we make our way to the other side of this house, he's gonna come around and try to attack us, and we'll be ready for him again. Don't use any of your heal items here. Just run up on him with the knife and start slashing away. Try to get him while his body's exposed from the monster. You can do a whole lot of damage. That won't always be the case, though. He won't always be out in the times like that. Try to get on the side of him. Try to avoid the uh, acid spit that he does. Or hold your block up if he is starting to get you. And uh, again, if you played this before, you already know it. But once he climbs on top of the roof, you need to get under some kind of awning because he'll make it rain acid all over the play area. And there's no way to avoid that. So as you see, he's kind of rolling around. He's not really doing a whole lot of damage to me. He's climbing on the roof here, so I'm going to go stand under here and uh, wait for him to finish doing his thing. While I'm waiting, I'm grabbing these items. I guess I can talk about that. I mean, if 
just because we're not using and selling items and buying things because we're trying to get that frugal dad trophy you still can pick up stuff and use it on another playthrough uh, I know some of the trophies require you to use a lot of money and if you're going for the Village of Shadows trophy you'll definitely want to have enough money to upgrade that uh, stake magnum all the way to max out so you can get that infinite ammo um, that's something that you guys are interested in doing trying to do a village of shadows uh video let me know and i'll get put one together for you show you how i beat the game on that level um, but for now we'll go back to this fight just stay on the side of them behind them if you can until you see that head exposed once he exposed excuse me once he exposes the body you want to try to run to the front of them and slash away but other than that, just stay to up on him and keep swinging away, and eventually, just like the rest of them, he'll go down. Yeah, as you can see, this fight is going to take a while. Uh, some of my swings I don't think are registering is actually connecting, but just keep taking your time. You might have better luck if you hold the aim button down and then you can directly stab at them, but I was just holding R2 down, swinging recklessly. But um, you might try that, might be able to speed you up a little bit. But uh, anytime you stun him and he falls down, that's a great opportunity to do a massive damage. Uh, never miss that. And then just keep swinging away and... Like I said, eventually he'll go down. It takes a little time because we're using the knife, but he will go. And there you see, you get the cutscene, you beat him. Uh, you'll automatically collect the uh, crystal from him after you do it. So make your way out. Um, it's in like the, the back right of the arena or where you've been fighting them at if you've been running all around. But uh, it's not too hard to find. Just follow this little video here eventually. If you run around the edge, the perimeter of the uh, where you've been fighting the mat, you will eventually come to where you see where you can walk out of that area. So run around till you find that. Uh, that's a good uh, signal there. You see that thing uh, sparking up there. If you see that off to the distance, that's where the exit is where you want to make your way towards. So you'll run up this little path here and you'll enter a cave. You need to go to the door, the, excuse me, the opening on your left, and that will get you the key you need to unlock that door right there in front of you. So I went to this one first, was like, oh, don't have the key, turn around, went in this little opening here, and there you have the key. After you get the key, you'll uh, go into another cutscene where Heisenberg is challenging you to, or asking you for help or whatever once that's over go back out go to that door use your newly found key and move on to the next area so this puts us right back where we started you're just going to run straight across get to the elevator and hit the switch to go up <laughs> Once at the top of the elevator, run out. It's only one path to take. It's the same way you came in earlier. Just follow it up the steps and around the little way there until you come outside. Once you're outside, run up to that gate there and unlock it. This is the same area where you had to swipe and jump up the uh, ladder to get through, but now we're coming from the other side. So we unlock it, run through, and then run down. That, uh, special enemy that was running around in this area won't be here either so once you get down to the creek head left and follow the creek all the way up the path here again uh no enemies here so relax and keep running up and follow it up this little area here those red double doors you're going to go through them Keep on running straight. You got signs here telling you that Heisenberg put up here telling you which way to go. So this one's part, not too hard. So just follow those big yellow arrows that he's put there for you. So you're going to run up here the side of the path where you uh, would go to the church and run to our last little uh, one of our special key doors here. So unlock that one. 
push through. Make sure you go straight. Don't veer off to the left. There's a little mini boss there, but we're only going for a speed run, so we definitely aren't doing any optional bosses. Uh, you'll start to hear wolves growl, but they won't attack you right when you exit, so don't worry about that. Just keep running. Head through. There's going to be some uh, enemies hanging around here. Go ahead and knife them up with the old Karambat knife if you got it and take them out. Get real uh, comfortable with that block button too. Remember, the enemies can't grab you if you, as long as you're blocking. So that's a real, uh, real helpful technique because you're having to have to be close up on them when you're attacking them with the knife. So just be prepared for that. Um, these guys will all start to spawn. Uh, just run up on them, knife those guys. See, he went down in one hit. Uh, keep swinging, take them out. This is the reason why we're doing this on easy mode, just to make it where taking them out with the knife is no big deal. See, there's two levers that you gotta pull here in order to let uh, to open up the gate. Uh, don't do like I did and run up to the gate. You either wanna climb up, climb up this ladder here. When you first get up in the area, climb up the ladder to your right. And once you get up top there, go hit a switch. Once you hit that switch, a bunch of enemies, you'll hear the howl and a bunch of enemies will start to appear. Immediately go run over to the other side. See that switch right there in front of you and make your way over to that. Got grabbed here, should have been paying attention, should have been blocking, don't make my mistake. Get up, knife these fools out the way. You can't just fall off, but I was mad that they grabbed me, so I was trying to do them up a little bit. Uh, ton of enemies here too many to try to fight with the knife so just run around them get by get up these steps so you can pull the next uh next lever here and then you're just kind of playing the waiting game until that door finishes open so just kind of run around stay uh try to stay away from them the best you can keep an eye on that door and whenever you see it's fully open you're going to want to run through so you see i'm just kind of dancing around trying to wait for that door to open and trying to stay away from them. Luckily, again, we got it on easy for this very reason. They're not too aggressive and boom, able to get by. They'll chase you for a little bit down here, but they won't come all the way up in here. So once you get over here, you're pretty much in the clear. You're gonna enter the stronghold. And this is a pretty challenging part to get through even on a uh, easy mode without having to use a bunch of health, but uh, we're gonna get through it. There's a save right there. Uh, you can save your game. No need to grab any of the pipe bombs because we won't be needing those, but I grab one anyway for a later playthrough. So you're going to run up here at the top, run up the steps and make a left. You're going to be in the, the wolf's den. So follow this same path I do here. So you're going to run around and eventually a guy's going to drop here. You can't run by this guy. He will grab you. Kill him. Don't do like I did. You cannot run by that guy. He's going to grab you every time. Be prepared to swipe him. So he got me, killed him. Now you're gonna wanna run up these steps here all the way to the top and use the zip line and you will uh, get to the other side uh, while they're all jumping at you. Once you land, be careful, there may be a guy right in your face when you land, like I was here. May not be a bad idea to kind of peep the scene over there before you jump on the zip line because if they're over there waiting for you, they're gonna get you as soon as you land. But run up the steps, run across this bridge here uh, more enemies will start jumping up. There's going to be an armored lichen here. I recommend just running by these guys the best you can. Hold your block up and try to uh, get by them. As you can see, I got the double whammy there, but make your way by them. Again, it's easy mode. They're not super aggressive. You see, they saw they had me where one hit would have killed me, and they all just kind of stood there waiting for my regeneration to kick in. That's why we're doing it on this mode, and that's what makes this an easy guide. Follow the path all the way down the steps. Eventually you'll come to a point where you'll have to shimmy through. Here we go. All right, so continue down the little part. He'll uh, start squeezing his way on through there. Nothing to fear here. None of these guys can spot you or do anything. It's just basically a little cut scene. So just keep on working your way through. Eventually you'll come to the other end. You can grab that first aid if you want. Again, uh, we're gonna use the first aid of the last couple fights we got. Uh, here's a save. You got a boss fight coming, so it wouldn't hurt to save here. Then we're gonna keep on trucking. Just follow the path all the way down and you drop into this arena, which I mean, have you ever seen something that looked more like a boss fight stage? 
He'll fall down on Urias or whatever his name is. You remember him from the beginning scene there when you get first get jumped by on the Lycans. Uh, this fight isn't too bad. Whenever he's up there, you want to run to the left or right. Don't try to run at him to get underneath him. You need to run to the left or right whenever he jumps and uh, then just run up on him and start hacking and slashing away. If you can get him in the face, you see there I caught him in the face and it got me a stun. Make sure you're not wasting blows hitting his actual axe. That doesn't hurt him. You want to be hearing like you want to you're hearing and you see him blood and you hear that kind of squishy sound. That's when you know you're hitting him. If you're getting sparks and hearing little ping ping, that means you're hitting his axe and you're not doing anything. Uh, eventually, he'll jump back up there and make a howl and he'll bring his buddies down here. Uh, it's too hard. Try to ignore them. Run up on those guys and kill them as quick as you can. Again, I got hit here, so I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be stunned uh, i guess i'm gonna be in the almost dead state quite a bit in this fight but this just shows you be comfortable in it just run around whenever you come back to where you can uh, take another hit then you can go in there and start being aggressive but just whenever your screen's flashing red just ease off run around the room until you uh get your heal back and i was pretty reckless on a lot of these i could have avoided a lot of this so don't think this is as hard as i made it look here but as you see, he hit me, I'm flashing red, so I'm running around. Okay, screen's back. Now I'll run up on him and try to do some damage. Try to stay to the side of him there. Again, got popped again, so running around. Kind of a rinse and repeat thing. Run up on him, swing until you get hit. Once you turn red, run away and uh, cower in fear. So I'm back, running in again, about to get popped again. This was not my best fight with him. See, it got him in the face again. Stunned him. Just look up and try to catch him in the face. It, uh, you can stun him. Makes the fight a lot easier. and get a couple extra swipes in. So, got me. I'm red. I still went in there and swung. That was a bad idea. Don't do what I did. If you're red, you really shouldn't be up in his face like that. But I was getting tired of constantly being a red and wanted the fight to be over. So I just ran in there. Got lucky. Didn't get popped again. But he caught me right there. So I'm easing up. I'm backing away. Staring him down. Waiting for my stuff to get. As you can see, he really doesn't even hardly even attack when you're red. Like the game, it's not easy. The game doesn't want to kill you. So you're back. Boom, popped again. I think I only got one swing in before I got hit again. So now I'm frustrated again. I'm just like, let's do it. Finally got him. He's uh crumbles away. You can grab that uh crystal axe and we can use it later on or on another playthrough. But uh once he's done, this red door in the back will open up. You can run by all of this stuff. We don't need any of those crystal fragments. Run all the way down these steps. Nah, no need to swipe those boxes. Grab the flask here and you'll go to another cutscene and Heisenberg will tell you how cool and tough you are and that he wants to talk to you. Let's take control. Go keep continue down the same path you were heading. Uh, you should be coming to a boat here. See, there you go. Boat's there. Get in it and we're going to take it all the way down to the next little section here. It's only one path here, so just keep going that's kind of weird I really thought they were going to have some kind of combat boat thing you know like Resident Evil 4 when you fight that big fish monster but just get in the boat and go from point A to point B you never really do anything with it once you come to this docking station here go ahead and dock the boat get out and run don't go down that path go up the ladder down that path is like uh, some other stuff that you really don't need I almost went down there. I was like, oh, I got time. But then I was like, forget it. It's a speed run. Go up the ladder. That's the quickest way. Going to need to use your, uh, well, never mind. You unlock that. You know, use your insignia key to unlock this little part, and then you can run right on through. So now we're back up by the church here. Uh, yeah, go to the right of the church there, and then make your way out those, uh, those black steel doors here. Uh, keep running. There's a goat here. Uh, they won't attack you as long as you don't run up on them. Look at me. I'm about to get done in by a goat and kill a giant werewolf and get messed up by a goat. But uh, 
basically you're working, you're making your way back to the Duke. So once you come out of there, you'll run down and curve right up to get down the, up this path to get back to the Duke. You can save because, you know, why not? You just beat a boss, turn around, and you're going to put all your flask that you've collected into this. Uh, once you put the first flask in, you'll go through a little cutscene. But after that, the rest of them uh, will just slide right on in. What was that? So yeah, after you get them all in there, Ethan just walks around and carries that big giant metal, I mean, giant stone thing within the rest of the game there, I guess. Uh, the torches all light up and you'll keep running straight down that path that unlocks this area here. Keep running straight across. Uh, shouldn't be any enemies out here, but just run straight across. We're going back to that ceremony site we were at. Uh, Ethan will start walking when you hear a loud noise in the back background there but just keep going eventually you can start sprinting again and i guess that goes without saying but guys be sprinting all the time this is a speed run so we always be sprinting uh once you get to that little umbrella logo drop the uh giant's chalice in there that he's just been lugging around that whole way and uh in true resident evil 8 fashion you'll get a cutscene, then go down another elevator it's like this game is full of elevators. I'm guessing they're used as little loading loading screens, but I mean, just painfully, every five minutes you're going down an elevator. So uh, follow this all the way down and go on to the uh, next section. All right, once it stops, uh, make your way out. There's only one path. Keep running down. Uh, you'll run across this bridge here and make your way into the old factory there. No enemies here until after you uh, talk with Heisenberg, so just nothing to fear. Just keep running along the path until you enter the building here. I'd like to speak to you about Rose and Miranda. Oh, come on then. Tell All right, once you enter the building, uh, just run straight and then uh, what are you planning? go to the left. There's a door you'll be able to go through on your left, that one. Go through there, walk your way down, take a left at the bottom of the steps and just follow the pathway. Uh, to initiate the cutscene, walk up to that curtain and uh, examine behind that curtain. You'll look around. Heisenberg will come talk to you, but as soon as you can, go ahead and skip that cutscene. And when you come to, you'll be getting chased by that uh, giant propeller monster. So run straight immediately. You're gonna hang a right. You can't make that. Even if you get closer, it'll just close faster. You run up there, jump through that. You gotta crouch, then run again, then make a left, and you'll be blocked. So hit X around this little uh, trash chute, and then you'll jump in and uh, avoid being killed by the propeller monster there. All right, once you come to, let's uh, run up and just climb your way up this trash. There's really only one way to go. You'll, I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out here. Just keep making your way uh, up the trash. Yep, look up, hit X, examine the ladder to jump and climb up it. There's going to be three uh, enemies up here. With these guys with the little metal uh, bands around their head, they kind of serve as a little shield. So if you do a head strike, it won't count. But I just ran by them. They're not too fast. If you just want to hold the block button down and run by them and go uh, crouch and go through there. up the ladder
And there you go. Up. We're in this giant underground I factory, I guess. All right. So turn right from the ladder and there'll be the Duke in here. You can go ahead and uh, save your game. All right, after you save, go on head left through these double doors here. There's really only one pathway you can take here, so just follow it all the way around. Uh, after you go through this red hallway here, there'll be a door with a red light on it. You gotta break that life with your knife, and then uh, two enemies are gonna pop out here. You're gonna have to be coming through this area more than once, so go ahead and take these guys out, plus they're in your way. They're not too challenging. Uh, follow up the steps. You're gonna continue down this path, go straight all the way across, then right, then another right to go down some steps. Another right again, and you guessed it, one more right. And then that door there, some enemies are gonna burst out. Go ahead and kill them. You're gonna have to spend a lot of time in this room as well, so just take them out. Again, they're not too challenging. They're dead. Keep falling to the back of the room, then make a left. It's gonna follow you down another little pathway. Another enemy, go ahead and do him in. Two more, boom. Man, this guy grabbed me, got bit. I'm in the red, but he's a simple enemy, so I ain't too concerned. Run up on him, give him the old swipe swipe. And this door here is the one you're looking for. Now that guy's gonna spawn as soon as you uh, grab this item back here and start to try to leave out, but open it up, get it. Don't even try to fight this guy, just run right by him. He'll uh, come to life, but again, you got the enemies dead out here, so it don't matter. You can get by him pretty easily. He won't follow you all the way down here. So once you get here, put that uh, relief mold that that uh, relief mold that you just got from the other room in this deal here. It takes a while, but again, you don't have to worry about that uh, soul that chasing you down. He won't come this far as long as you run right by him. He won't uh, follow you into this area. That thing takes a while, but once you get that, you got the relief horse. Take it over here and put it in this little impression in the door, and that'll unlock the next area. Run up the steps. There will be an enemy up here waiting on you. He always surprises me, but take him out. Then keep running around, turn left, and you're going to fall down this, then fall down one more time. Now, you got these little blades coming down. Time your sprint to where uh, as soon as it comes down, run right by. Otherwise, you can get hit. Won't kill you automatically, but why take the extra damage? If you time it right, you can run by both of those. Uh, go ahead and kill him. You don't want one of these guys running up on you and hitting you while you're trying to time your run across. And then you go. Two more enemies down here. Take them out. And run across when you think you can make it. Climb up the ladder. There'll be another grate, crouch down, examine the gate grate to pull it loose so you can crawl through. Take a left and run. This place is kind of a maze, so just follow this path closely. Uh, run down here to the right. Go down the steps. Gonna go up the ladder, steps to your right. You gotta swipe the light at the top, then swipe the one at the bottom. And here is the uh, next little piece we need. Cog mold. So we're gonna go back to that same re room we used the first relief mold in. Don't get caught up on the fence like I did. Make your way back up. Up here, up the steps. Now that door on the right is gonna be what you do. So now see, I got swapped here. You can kill these guys with a knife. I really didn't fool with it. I just tried to avoid them the best I could has uh, just seen more trouble than it's worth. So again, he got me, but game's on easy. He really doesn't try to do much to finish me off when he clearly could have. Make your way over here, use the cog mold. Now, uh, he may come in this room after you like he does here, so just keep an eye on him. Don't just stare at the mold deal there because it does take a while. He gets around you, you got plenty of things in the room to kind of walk around to avoid him just like when you're a little kid just keep running around the old coffee table until he uh, gets tired of you then back in this area make a left that's where you want to use the 
cog mold that you got. As soon as you place it there, there's a switch right next to where you place the cog. Examine that, he'll throw the switch, and then you can get to the area down there. So go back down the steps, go loop around. Instead of making a right, make a left and loop around again. And then this is the area you're gonna be going towards. So down here, make a left once you enter that hallway. Uh, I ran up on him and started swinging just because he startled me. But again, don't waste the time trying to kill him. Come up here, make a right, go up these steps, follow the path to the right. Now you got all these to hit. The knife makes it pretty easy, but be as quick as you can because you do have one of those guys chasing you. So get all those knights popped before he gets in after you and to keep running. If he does get in, you just run around, get him away from the door, and then go back. There's three enemies in here, one to your left and two in front of you. And boom, I got popped here. Took him out and then uh, kept going, avoided the rest. You're looking for steps to go up. So after you take that enemy out on the ref, follow him down and then kind of hug the wall till you come to a point where you see some more steps to run up. That's the way you want to go. Um, once you're up the steps, follow the path down. Um, once you get here, one of these things are going to pop out after you and try to get you. Just immediately turn left, avoid him, and try to swipe these deals. If you can get all these uh, swipe before he gets to you, you don't even have to worry about that guy. Now, once you hit this switch on the other side of the door, he just stops chasing you for some reason. So get out, hit that switch. If he's close by, he'll just turn around and walk away. Wait for that platform to drop, then run across into this area. Keep on trucking, only one path to go. Now there's gonna be a guy in here. You can run around this little area here, this big giant like boiler or whatever it is to get around them and you got another door with all the lights that you gotta hit. So try to get them done. Again, if he catches you, run around the whole boiler again. He busts through, you're gonna immediately turn to the left and run. Crouch to get by the first one, and then up the ladder, excuse me, up the steps, examine the door handle on the right there, and then you're uh, free. He'll be banging on the door, but he won't actually get in, so no need to worry there. Um, nothing real of importance in this room, so keep on going. You're gonna wanna hit that uh, switch and call the elevator up to this floor. Uh, you can save if you want. Uh, I didn't want to save, didn't want to waste the time waiting on the elevator to come up, so I went ahead and continued on to the next area. But feel free to wait there and save if you want. Got a long way to go. So, one path to take here, follow it all the way. Go down the uh, ladder here, and then you're going to go inside this broken culvert. Follow it down, go up the little opening there. You see the lights kind of guiding your way. Keep running down this little mine path. There'll be a couple enemies in here, but if you run straight by, no one really even has time to notice you to even try to attack. Once coming to this little open room here, there'll be a little vent to the back. Just run up on it, crouch, get in it. Enemies won't even have a chance to even try to attack you. Once you get on the other side of the vent, uh, fall down here. Uh, anytime you can fall down versus climbing down a ladder, do that. It just goes a lot quicker. Keep running straight. Now, this is one of the areas where you are allowed to use your gun in just to shoot the targets out, not the enemies. So get ready to do that. All right, so equip whatever gun you want to use, and you can shoot out the target at the very bottom here. Got to position yourself uh, just right. And shoot that one out and then shoot that other one out. You can actually get three of the lights out from this uh, bottom part here. Here I only did two. Uh, do it however you want. Um, just make sure you get all of them shot out before you make it up to the top. And you uh, definitely don't want to accidentally shoot one of the enemies and avoid your trophy. So run up the steps. Two of the jet soldats will appear. Just run by them. Uh, they're going to keep jumping around to wherever you are but whenever you come to the light here i shot another light out because i was in better position then immediately swap back to my knife just to make sure i don't accidentally shoot anybody and then just keep making your way up so run by that guy once you get up this last steps here this is the one you can't shoot from the ground you might have to crouch down and get a better angle on it shoot that that'll pop up uh, one of these old dats is going to jump right in front of the ladder. Make your way by him. If he hits you, no big deal. You can still make your way up the ladder while you're red, but just get by him and uh, climb up. 
to get over here and they won't follow you up the ladder. Once you're up the ladder, you are safe. So follow this little winding path all the way until you get uh, to the platform here and then you're gonna head left once you hit the platform. And we're gonna be coming up on a, another spot where you're able to use your gun. So get your gun equipped. Uh, make sure it's loaded in case you uh, miss on your first little go around. So follow this uh, path up, take the steps all the way to the top. And once you get up here and start to cross this pathway, the little wind turbine is going to suck you in and you have to shoot that uh, target there in the middle to stop it. So just line it up, take your time. You have plenty of time, it's not hard to do. Uh, you get a little cutscene, the fan will blow off. And that's going to be the path that you want to take. So once you regain control, head towards the uh, fan you just shot out and you'll run up on there and uh, there's a little, basically you're going to be walking along that pipe there. So fall down on the pipe, keep making your way down, fall down again. You can't fall off here, so don't worry. Make your way up the ladder and once you get to the top, you'll get a cutscene with Ethan opening it up. You can't skip it, just let him do his thing there. You'll see a lot of times in this playthrough where I pause the game thinking I can skip something, so just ignore that. All right, so once you finally make it through, you're going to run over to this elevator and hit the button, and that's going to bring you back to the uh, main area where we can call the Duke up to the, the third level there. If that happens, it's all over for your kid and for the whole village. Up the ladder, make there's only one path to take, follow it all the way around, get this uh, last uh, key mold that we need here. So we're going to make our way back to that uh, that little mold processing thing down on the first floor, but that's what we got the uh, been calling the elevators up with the Duke on it for. So once you make your way up to the top here, pull the switch and call the elevator, and then we're going to ride it back down to that uh, first floor. You know, I say first floor, but if you see there, it's actually B4 is where we need to go to uh, use the key mold. So keep that in mind. Once you get on the elevator, you're going to want to go to B4. Once it comes up, walk up on there, select B4, the elevator will go down. You can take this time to save if you want. Uh, you can't save while the elevator's moving, but... Might as well. There are some uh, tough enemies on this little next section, so definitely won't hurt to save in case something goes wrong and you need to reload to save some extra time. So there you see there, once it stops, you're able to save again. Go out the doors to your left. Basically taking that same path we took the first time. It's just a little different because it's dark now because you, uh, I guess, took the power out when you blew everything up there. So this is the same path we took at the beginning. Run up those steps, make a right, keep going. It'll go all the way across. Gonna be an enemy waiting down here for you. Just run by him. I should have been holding the block button, but a run by him. Again, I don't think it's worth trying to fight those Zoldats with the uh, knife, but uh, keep running. It's gonna be another Zoldat down here and some uh, little zombie people just run by him. Got lucky, should have got hit there, but uh, whole point, make it down to this uh, thing. And then you want to, after you put the key mold in there, just keep an eye on these guys. That other Zoldad is probably not too far behind chasing you into this room. So just keep an eye on everybody and uh, wait for your key mold to finish processing there. See, I'm trying to keep an eye on the door in him in case the other one sneaks in on me. So once you got your key, okay, see, now the other one's in here. Make your way out and... Uh, Avoid that zombie if you didn't kill him on the first go around here. And we're making our way uh, back to the Duke so we can get on that elevator. All right, so we're up the steps. Take a left. You're going to have an armored Zoldad up here. If you're a uh, timer right, you can just run right by this guy without even having to deal with him. You definitely ain't killing that guy with a knife, so don't even try. And you're going to come in here. Now, there's going to be one down this corridor. There's not enough space for you to run by this one, so don't do like I did. Thought I'd be able to push by him. You can't, and you can't kill him with a knife, so just back up. 
uh, let him come on through. Once he gets into this uh, open area, then you got enough room to put the old Barry Sanders juke move on him to get by him and uh, get to the Duke. So don't worry about that other one. He walks slow. So there you see, he's by you. You run by him and he's too slow to catch up to you. So don't worry about it. Hang it right out the door and we're back to the Duke. So get on the elevator and you want to go back up to the top floor, B1. And we'll use our uh, newly found key on the door and get ready for a boss fight with the old propeller monster. So we're at the top, gonna use our Heisenberg's key on the uh, door with the uh, Heisenberg crest on it. A little fancy mechanical door, it opens up. Uh, there's a room here where there's some supplies and stuff, but we're on a knife only run, so we don't need no stinking ammo. Run through here, and eventually the propeller monster's gonna burst out and get you. You just wanna kinda chill out here until he starts his charge, then sidestep away as you know, he's gonna be tearing up all the walls as he goes. Just try not to get caught behind him. Then run up on him and uh, swipe at the knife while he's stuck in the wall. This fight uh, is easier than it uh, sounds trying to kill this guy with this, but he's on easy mode, he stays stuck in the wall for quite a bit of time. You'll actually be shocked. Um, but whenever he's uh, up and moving, obviously you just wanna stand back, wait for him to charge, and then uh, whenever he's stuck in the wall, start having at him. So you see here, I'm waiting here, trying to get him to do his charge. He's winding up the pitch. Here he comes. Step to the side, didn't do it quick enough. But now I'm looking for him. There he is, he's up on the wall. I can't run up to him fast because I got hit, but boom. You, you know, sometimes that thing hits twice on a swing. And this thing does the good damage. I already got him on fire. Uh, just keep hacking away. Avoid that fire. I guess whenever he does do the fire, the fire charge there. You might get lucky and can finish him before he even does it, but when that fire can do a little damage, again, become a little bit of a nuisance. So same thing. As soon as he runs into a wall and he gets stuck, just run up on the back of him and start swinging away. In fact, like you see, he's dead. Didn't even uh, have time to shoot the fire. So I... Uh, I thought that fight was going to be super challenging with the knife, but it was definitely one of the easier boss fights you do. Um, once you get in this room, just make the, go to the first door on your right after beating the boss. No point in running around and collecting all that other stuff. We're on a speed run. We do not care about that. Once you fall down this area, climb up the ladder and make your way across to this other little deal, little bucket on the end of this walkway here. I turned around there for a second. I was thinking, was I supposed to hit a switch to power this thing? So I kind of second guessed myself, but no, just run right across, get on this little stand and hit the switch and uh, it'll take Ethan up to the top there. Yeah, got to turn around to get off there. Kind of got confused there. Go through these doors. And once you try to go through those double doors, Heisenberg will come to smack you back down. So after this cutscene, you'll uh, be back at the bottom, unfortunately. But turn around, go through here, pull this little uh, grate off and climb through the vent. Once you're through the vent to the left, you'll have some debris to move. Once you move the debris, it'll be a cutscene. And there you go. Immediately walk up to the uh, little machine that Chris built for you and hold down X until uh, the full bar is filled all the way around it. And then uh, he'll suit up and be ready to go. Now, you are allowed to use guns in this fight with Heisenberg as you are in this machine here. So this is perfectly allowed. You're good. This will not void your trophy. Take the machine onto the elevator and ride it all the way to the top.
Once you get to the top, you got to use your cannon to uh, blast it open. It's L2 plus R2 to use a cannon. R2 by itself to use a machine gun. This fight isn't too bad, especially if you've already beat it on a regular difficulty. Being on easy isn't bad. You basically, the whole goal is to uh, shoot the red glowing targets on, on Heisenberg. Anytime he's charging you and you have your cannon available, shoot it. It'll stun him. Other than that, try to uh, hold your L1 for your guard while you move to the side. Sometimes if you're lucky, he'll miss you completely, but if he does hit you, you're blocking. So as you can see, I'm just trying to work those uh, work those red points. Red, work those red points on him. Uh, if you're able to hit one of those red points on him, it will, uh, it will stop him from charging you as well. Once he does this little motion, just try to target his head. Eventually he'll start uh, strafing to the right. Try to time it and strafe right along with him. You get lucky, you can uh, cause him to drop all that stuff and uh, give yourself some cover. Try to uh, position yourself between one of those things and Heisenberg, whenever he's charging you, he'll uh, stop whenever he comes to one of those to cut it down, which gives you a little bit more time to get some hits in on him. But uh, yeah, don't do what I did, trying to use the cannon to attack. The cannon should be used strictly for defense, and the machine gun is what you're gonna be using for offense here. Now this fight is super hard on uh, Village of Shadows mode. So again, if anybody needs help uh, getting that Village of Shadows trophy, uh, let me know. We can put a video together showing you how to do that as well as in the comments. So eventually, once you uh, light him up, he'll start to meander his way towards the middle. You can just sit there. Once this little magnetic field happens, there's nothing you can do here. He'll uh, suck you up and get you to the next part of the boss fight. But uh, target him with the cannon, blast him. He'll drop you. You'll, uh, you're gonna be fighting him now on foot. Now again, you cannot use your gun in this part. So have your knife equipped. And this is not, it looks daunting, but just run up on him with the knife and try to hit the face if you can. If you can't, that's okay. Just run up on him, start swiping. If you catch that face, he'll rear back and, uh, and stun, but just keep swiping away. This one's super easy. Just keep swiping away. He, you shouldn't have, he shouldn't be able to do anything too much to you. Try to guard when you think you're gonna get hit. But as you see, no real like, uh, trying to avoid or dodge anything just ran up on them and started swinging so now once you uh beat him here again he'll uh start to neander his way back to the uh middle of the arena he won't hurt you as you can see i'm standing right here next to him he's not doing anything he's just walking his way back to the center so he can start the final cutscene. now when he does this cutscene, you don't even have to actually hit anything ethan will do it all it's all part of cutscene. he'll flop in the air and uh, eventually he'll make his way back to the machine he was using to fight him in the first phase of the fight and he'll pull the trigger on the cannon one last time to finish Heisenberg for good. All right, eventually you'll come to a cutscene that you can skip. What the hell happened? I dealt with Heisenberg. Now I'm going to find Miranda and get Rose back. There we go. And when you take back control, you should be playing as old Chris Redfield. Now, even though you're playing as Chris, you still have to use the knife. Luckily, Chris already starts off with this knife, so you won't have to uh, change back to a weaker knife if you've already collected that Karambit knife. Uh, skip that scene where Chris explains the situation again. Remember you start off equipped with your gun switch out of it right away So you uh, you're good to go with the knife You may want to uh, I'm not sure if it starts off a sign of your shortcuts or not, but if not you might want to add it on there so take off and uh, Come to the part where you see your uh, teammate there 
Chris will walk over and talk to him for another cutscene. So once you uh, get finished with that cutscene, keep going down the path. Start to be attacked by uh, wolves. I think just try to run by as many of them as you can. Uh, they're they're gonna keep coming, keep showing up. So uh, just run right by them. You'll be taking some damage, but just try to hold your block when you can. See right there, if I took my own advice and held my block up when the guy got there. Keep making your way through. Really wasn't a point of grabbing those supplies since we can't use hardly any of them. Uh, go through this little door that's partway cracked open. Uh, there's going to be two of those uh, alpha wolves in here. I don't try to fight two of them with the knife. Just run by them. Get by them the best you can. Uh, follow this path down here, then turn towards the left. You can't go through that part. Just got confused there. You don't want to go that way. You want to go left of the tree when it pops in front of you. Then that's the path you want to take. So follow it down, then go up the little snowy hill here and drop down in the... Alpha Wolves won't chase you into this section. So see this door I'm looking at right there on the uh, right? That's the door you want to go into. I got confused, ran up here, grabbed some supplies, kind of lost, like, where should I be going? Don't know, don't know. So then I'm like, okay, this is it, run down here. Well, if you start to run down here, you'll see, boom, gets blocked by the mold. So not the right way. Then I go in here thinking, okay, this is the area. Sorry, this is terrible for a guy, and that's not the right spot. So then I finally get to the right door. So don't do all that, just go to that door. There'll be two enemies in there and another waiting for you outside. I uh, ran around there to avoid the enemy, but you really wanna go up the, uh, out that little fence there and then hang a right. Now, there's gonna be a ton of enemies here piled up. This is probably the one of the harder parts to get through, but just make your way through them. Boom, hold the block got by him getting hit again still holding my block up let's go the block you know tap l1 uh, after you after you block and you can uh, punch the enemies back there to get them off of you but eventually you keep pushing your way forward and you'll get to this cutscene once you get to this cutscene all those enemies that are behind you go away now you can use your little laser targeted thing here you are allowed to use this this is not for the trophy you have to do this to get by after the first one, uh, they're going to start gearing up, getting ready to attack you. Now switch back to your, your knife. Here you see I equipped it to the shortcut menu. That way, when I'm switching between this little laser targeter and my knife, I won't actually end up getting the gun and shooting somebody. So just try to avoid the enemies uh, as the best you can. I like to go up into this area, and then once they'll run up close on me, you can kind of use these uh, this little porch to run around them and get back to the other end of them. But uh, you may have to end up attacking a few of them, but there's going to be a lot of them and they'll be nonstop coming. So here I kind of got trapped up in here, ended up running back around. Got bit. And again, this just kind of goes along with what I was saying. And this kind of playthrough with the knives only and not using healing items, you just got to be comfortable getting hit and uh, playing with low health. So now I'm by everybody. Basically, that's what you're looking. You're looking for an opening and keep moving, keep kind of moving away from the enemies that you know where they are to give yourself enough time to target it long enough. Once you target it, all the uh, and it hits, all the enemies that are in the area currently will die. So you can kind of get a little restart there. So he's going to reload again. You got a bunch of enemies. Basically, you're waiting for the queue. He'll tell you when he's ready. To strike again and you can do that but for now just trying to avoid them trying to uh, lure them back in here again I like to hang out in this area and when they get close I like to try to run around them on this porch sometimes it works pretty good sometimes it does not so uh, here I am I'm trying to get this thing in here from the porch and boom I get it drop all the enemies and we're good to go it crumbles after the third shot and then you can make your way up there and drop down into the uh, into the room for, in my opinion, the second hardest uh, fight on this uh, knives only run, and with only using uh, 
less than four healing items. So make sure you got at least one healing item here. I recommend using, if you need to use one on this fight to get through it, I recommend doing it here and then saving two for the final boss fight because she is pretty tough. At least for me, she was with the knife and I needed, uh, I needed my healing items. So once you go in here, you're going to be fighting uh, another Urias, but this one's armored on the front. And when you're doing them with the knife, there's pretty much the best place to get them is on his uh, lower leg. One of them isn't armored on the front and you just crouch and try to get that leg. You can try to get that back as much as you can, but it's hard with the knife. So this fight takes a really long time. You're, you're not going to be doing a lot of damage with him like takes about 15 minutes so it is a long strenuous fight you cannot use your laser targeter on him that will void the trophy it's knife only no grenades and it is a long drudging thing just keep trying to run around uh run around him if you turn red same strategy like before you turn red back up ease off get him give it a break that's the leg i'm talking about that you can get from the side that isn't that won't make you constantly hit armor if you try to get that other leg he has like an armor plate down there and you're just hitting that but um just dance around him and uh keep swinging the old knife until he drops but uh, like i said be prepared for a long long drawn out fight and if you have to use you get like five, you know, five, ten minutes into this fight and you're almost dead and you think you're about to pop. Go ahead and use one of your healing items. You don't want to repeat this fight over and over again. It is a real slog. Whenever he jumps up there, remember you want to run to the side. You don't want to try to run towards him to get underneath him he will hit you every time you want to run to one side of the room or the other to avoid that then run up on him and try to get a couple of swipes in again like i said i found the best strategy for me was just crouching and tearing them legs up turn them legs into linguini and i'll be back with you guys at the end of this fight
So after about 10 to 15 minutes of hacking away at that leg, he'll turn to crystal just like the rest of them. Grab that mace. Uh, you definitely earned it. I'll keep going. And then when uh, he's dead, this pathway will open up here. You can follow it till you uh, find the Mega My Seat. It'll initiate a cutscene with Chris. So if Miranda was the fake Mia, and I'll get back with you after that happens. We can figure that out later. Focus on the plan. I found it. It's the Megamycete. Captain, I have eyes on Miranda at the ceremony site. Keep your distance. After the cutscene, make your way through this little water and then up these steps. Too late now, but we really should have told Ethan the plan. There wasn't time. And we didn't expect Miranda to act so soon. Only, only one path to take here, so just keep going. Sorry, at that point, I was playing with one hand. I was doing something else, so that's why you see me running into the wall, trying to play with one hand there. Uh, you'll enter Miranda's um, laboratory here and just loop around the table. Use your knife. Actually, yeah, use your knife to break that lock off and open the door to initiate the cutscene where you find... Uh, Mia, and at this point, you're done with Chris, and you're going to take back control of Ethan. Skip the cutscene, and then you'll just walk forward. Eventually, uh, Ethan's going to fall down. It really doesn't matter which, which which way you walk. Just keep walking uh, forward, and eventually, Ethan will collapse and, and uh, go into another cutscene. All right, so after you skip that scene, you'll be in another one where you're riding in the Duke's carriage. Uh, as soon as it lets you, you can skip that if you want to. And that's gonna put us in the final area. Now, hopefully you've been uh, following my guide and have saved your healing items for this fight here. You may not have trouble with it. It may have just been me and my skill level, but I had a tough time with this boss with just a knife where a couple times where I was like, man, keep getting into red. And unlike some of the other enemies, she, she doesn't hold back whenever you're getting red. She's still coming at you. Um, you can uh, sell all your stuff to the Duke if you want. Uh, I was worried that my stuff wouldn't carry over. It does, so you don't have to do this. Um, we got plenty of time. Uh, I think when we finish this run, we think we're going to end up having beat the game in around two hours and 20 minutes. So that's another thing. If you're not following this guy or going at the same pace as, as I am, uh, you still should have plenty of time to get this game built, uh, excuse me, get this game beat under the time limit to unlock that dash and dad. Definitely want to save here because, again, if she kills you, just reload the save. Don't try to uh, restart it because that's just adding to your time. So make sure you got uh, two, healing, two or three healing items, depending on how many of you used thus far. You can craft them if you haven't been picking any up. You should have plenty enough for that. Uh, Ethan's only going to walk until you get to a certain point. Then you'll be able to sprint again. Just ignore. There's like uh, three enemies that spawn along your path, but you can go right by them. So that was enemy one. Here's number two that comes, and then one's going to start to come out the ground here. Just go right by them and uh, run into the uh, Mega My Seat and hit the X button to climb through the mold. And yeah, once the fight starts, just like the rest of them, man, I mean, you're using a knife. There's not a whole lot of strategy. Just run up and start swinging. She's tough. Um, she'll make a comment like, here, I'm about to come at you now. Whenever she like, uh, she telegraphs, whenever she rears back like she's about to strike, throw your guard up. Um, pretty quickly, you see you got her into the second phase in her spider space there. So same thing. Sometimes I have a hard time hitting her when she's like this. But... Uh, just run up on it and keep swinging. So you just keep running and swinging. Uh, at some point in time, our spider face will jump up top there. Uh, wait for her to get ready to jump and then sprint to the one side of the arena. This is a, gives you a good opportunity to get some licks in while she uh, recovers from that landing. And now you get to the part of the fight that's really tough when she's flying around in the air because, you know, you got a knife. You can try to get up under. Sometimes you can get lucky. She'll be low enough to where you can uh, get a couple of swipes in. Uh, at, least you, at least I think I am. Heck, it's so hard to tell. It looks like you're seeing some blood sometimes there when she's underneath you. 
She'll run around and she'll make these yellow globes, these uh, yellow blobs glow. Just hold your block up, that's all you can do. You really can't do anything there. You see, I popped a heal on item right there. And just uh, roll around. At some points in time while she's in the air, she will uh, swing up and charge you. Make sure you block that. That, that does, does some significant damage, but not that bad if you block. And uh, just follow her around and swing, man. It's tough, but uh, you'll get some damage, some chip damage in here and there. So just keep hacking away. And anytime she's got the uh, balls in there, when you see them start to glow, hold your guard up. There you see, I guarded those, didn't do too much damage. Now I'm back up on trying to get underneath there and trying to get some licks in with my knife. At some point in the fight, she's going to start to make this big giant ball of pus or whatever it is. Nothing you can do about it. Just stand there and hold your guard. She's too high for you to swing at, and you can't do anything with that. So just hold your guard, take the hit like a champ, and uh, afterwards, when she falls down, she'll go into the little black and white stage. She's going to appear in front of you off to a distance and start like a little combo attack. Yeah, you can try to get some swings in uh, on the back end after she finishes her last swipe, but she pretty much disappears as soon as she's done with it. Uh, you may get lucky and get a hit or two in there, but uh, she's going to do it a couple of times. Just keep trying to swing and get her every chance you get, but as long as you kind of strafe to either one side or the other, you should easily be able to avoid this attack. So as soon as you go out of the black and white phase, you're going to be some uh, mold appear out of the ground. you got to get behind one of those molds because a big little giant volcano thing is going to appear in the middle. That's just going to rain damage on everything. Be ready for it. As soon as it stops, sprint out and run up on her and start swinging. She'll be in a regular phase on the ground. Now it's random on what she's going to be in. Sometimes you get lucky and she'll switch to the spider phase, but more times than not, she's going to go back to this annoying phase where she's flying in the air and you're trying to get up underneath her. Um, so same thing as before, run up on her, try to swing around and try to take her out. As you can see there, she transitioned from air to spider mode. Uh, you don't want to get caught underneath that, but, uh, just run around swing. She's back on top. So what do we do? Wait for her to jump and sprint to the right to avoid, then run up on her and try to get a couple licks in while she's recovering. So boom, got unlucky. She's back in there already, but at least she fell down low enough for me to get some licks in. She's got the balls floating around with her. We know what to do with those. We swing, swing, swing. And once we see them turn yellow, we hold our guard up and take them like a champ. So boom, she caught me with that one, but I run up on her, swinging away. And that's all you gotta do in this fight. Kind of just, if, whenever she's in air mode, try to get up underneath her and get some licks in when she's in spider mode or just her regular humanoid mode just run up on them and try to get them uh pop them in the with the knife as many times as you can face shots actually do more damage if you're able to land one but at, with this fight i would say as long as you're getting any kind of contact i'd be happy with it so this fight takes a while as well but just keep running around they turn glowing you know, hold your block up and just keep chasing her around Caught me with that dang drop attack again. Don't be like me. It's kind of tough when you're trying to constantly stay underneath her to get licks in. For, so when she hits that, I'm pretty susceptible to it when you got the knife, but you can't avoid that. That time she was in the air and jumped. I really didn't see where she was coming from, so I just held my block up and it didn't hurt me too bad. So she's back in the air. You know the drill. Run up under her and try to get some licks in before she gets too high and out of the way. Turns, uh, starts glowing, hold your guard up, block them, and start swinging away. Back in the, uh, the grayed out phase. Same thing as the first time, she'll just appear off in the distance and start a combo. Uh, just kind of rotate to the side and try to get some licks in, be close to her to where after she finishes that last attack, you can get her. Now she's in regular mode here, so I'm able to get some licks in. That's nice. 
Whenever she grabs you like this, that's when you know you're in this cutscene here. Uh, he'll start to he'll pull out his knife and start to cut away. And you're able to use your gun here. You have to use a gun to shoot the uh, glowing blob here, otherwise you will die. So that will not void the trophy out. But after you shoot the blob, don't shoot her. Only shoot the blob. And after you uh, shoot the blob here, you gotta immediately switch back to your knife to finish her off. If you use the gun to finish her off, you will not get the trophy. And if that would suck so bad to come this far and to lose it on the last enemy of the game. So we get the knife out and start swinging. You'll get closer and closer to her as the cutscene, or I guess as it plays out, and close enough to where you'll be able to make connection with your knife. And there you have it, we beat the game, and if we did everything right, we should unlock uh, the four trophies that we set out to do on this playthrough. One single playthrough, so save ourselves some time. Uh, let's take a look here at the end. So as you can see, casual difficulty, beat the game in two hours and 27 minutes, so plenty of room for error in there. If you make a couple mistakes, like as you can tell in my playthrough, I made plenty of mistakes. And let's go ahead and pull up uh, the challenges so you can see what all we got on this playthrough. So there you see, we got Don't Trust That Snake Oil for using less than uh, four healing items. We got Dash and Dad for beating the game in under three hours. Frugal Father for spending less than 10,000 lay and Knives Out for only using the knife to kill all the enemies in the game. So way to go guys, you did it. You got all these trophies, you're awesome. If you like this video and it helped you in any kind of way, please consider subscribing. I make uh, how-to videos, also do skits, top tens, just about any kind of gaming content you can think of. We got it on this channel and we'd love to have you so you don't miss our next video. Uh, as always, I'm Chase and this has been Chase in Games.